Hello people, Mike here. Today I want to talk about one of our favorite topics, seal clubbing. Whether you should do it, should you feel bad about doing it? And if you're going to do it, what tanks should you use? Well, I'll tell you, I'm one of those people that always used to feel bad about seal clubbing. Oh, leave those poor people alone and let them beat each other up in the low tiers. And I used to stay away from anything below tier 7. Not because of some principles, but just because I felt like it was the wrong thing to do. But, you know, uh, in the last couple of uh, months, really last year, we've all noticed a creeping of noobs into the upper tiers because, of course, update 5.5 and all the 5x certificates, yada, yada, yada. They're everywhere. And so our dearest clan leader, Artillery Arthur, had a great point one day that he said to me, you know what, these guys are coming up to the upper tiers and ruining our matches. Why not go down to their tiers and ruin theirs? And, you know, fix some of our falling win rates while we're at it. Well, I think that's a great point. And so occasionally I now will do seal clubbing at tier 5. I really don't like going below tier 5, but and I actually only have two tanks below tier 5. So I'm going to talk primarily about seal clubbing in tier 5, which is really where you're going to be able to seal club and actually still make some credits and, you know, the matches aren't completely horrible. And the two best tanks to absolutely seal club in tier 5 are these two right here, the BDR and the T1 Heavy. Everybody knows the T1 Heavy has been buffed in like multiple times. It's now really, really strong. It's a great tank. But we all sort of forgot about the BDR. Arthur discovered it last week. This thing has had the crap buffed out of it. And it is an absolute monster now in Tier 5. Both these tanks are really strong. Really good armor. Big guns. You can absolutely dominate. And, and I will tell you, if you're going to Steel Club in Tier 5, just bring a platoon, mate. It's, the two of you can pretty much almost always win the match on your own. So let's take a look at the tanks. Let's take a look at the two tanks, the T1 Heavy and the BDR. So DPM is basically the same. The T1's a little bit better. Uh, penetration also fairly similar. The Alpha is a big difference. The BDR is much bigger Alpha, which allows it to be exposed less often. The, the 225 is, is really devastating against Tier 5s and Tier 4s. It, it just kills them. Um, Gun handling is much better, and I mean much better than T1. T1 is lower aim time. The dispersion on the BDR is horrible. It definitely takes a little while to get used to. Um, the T1 has the minus 10, but the BDR at minus 8 is not bad. Both tanks have decent mobility, but the T1 is a lot more mobile. It's got uh, a lot more horsepower. You can see that, and um the the power to weight is much higher it's a very mobile tank the t1 i will tell you that the bdr is sluggish and it in traverse is pretty bad on the bdr it does not like to turn the t1 is actually damn near agile i would say for a heavy tank um looking at the armor they're both really strong i mean look at these turret armors 140 on the front of the turret for a tier 5 is ridiculous and even the sides of the turret on the bdr at 120 I mean, the, the turret is absolutely ridiculous. The T1 is very strong in the front. 140 and 140 in the hull armor. Uh, but the sides are weaker. But still, the sides of the, the T1, you'll see in the replay, bounce a ton of stuff. The back of the T1 is just made of paper. Uh, the back of the BDR is a little bit better. Um, it will bounce a little bit. But overall, based on my experience with the two, I would say the BDR has a more reliable armor, sides and front. It seems to bounce a lot more shots. The T1 has the advantage of mobility and the gun depression. So it's kind of a toss up on which ones you like more. It more depends on your style. So we have a couple of great matches today. And uh, the first one is from my favorite clan member. Oops, I died again. Now he's tied for my favorite clan member with Prowler, but Prowler isn't doing replays quite yet. So we've got Oops in, of course, the uh, T1 Heavy at Mines. And he is um, marching along right to the hill. He knows what he's doing. He's young, but he's very experienced. And what you're going to see is the T1 Heavy, why it's so insanely broken right now in Tier 5. This is absolutely a crazy match. So he's staying behind the rock, being careful. 
watching all the other tanks, letting the idiots get farmed. Already bounces a shot from the KV-1, 200 damage bounced. Pops him on the lower plate, piece of cake. The gun impression is so great right here. Pops this guy, I mean, who puts a Stug up there? I mean, the thing has no gun depression. I mean, these people are just, well, they're seals. That shot, I uh, just went into outer space because he actually aimed down. I don't know where that went. That just ghosted on him. So he's doing a good job of just holding the hill. You notice this Leo just keeps bouncing him. I, I mean, the guy is just awful. The Stug still sitting up there has no idea what to do. Leo still bouncing. He rushed the hill, did a nice job, but then can't do anything with it. So he pops him in the front, just kind of scare him off. I think Leo at this point decides it's time to leave. And one more parting gift on the way out. So he's down two shots, basically, and he's down half his hit points are gone. That's the beauty of these big tanks. They take off so much damage. The Stug's still pushing in the worst spot on the map for that tank. And, uh, you know, gets really lucky. <laughs> well, for a couple seconds. So he still has not lost any hit points, and now he's completely dominating. He completely owns the hill. He pushed everybody off, killed everybody else. But as you can see, it's down to two against four, so he's kind of running out of teammates. So the SU is in the back, uh, you know, which is fine. He's a TD, but Oops is now holding the hill by himself against four tanks. And you've got the, uh, I don't even know what that is behind him. He's still bouncing shots from the Leo. Up to 760. Takes a hit there, but this guy takes a hit and instead of backing off is now rushing them. It's the mentality of, well, we got four on one, so let's just kill him. But it bounces 200 from the back. Another 160. So it's actually an SU that came around and missed uh, 200 into the back when he kills him, which is a great decision. Take out the biggest gun first. Bouncing a ton of shots, up to 2,000 damage. Another 90 bounced, 2165. And he gets it down to a two-on-two, two, bouncing another 175, pops the Leo up to 275, just bounce after bounce after bounce. I mean, they can do nothing with him. But this tank, and the reason it works so well is most of the players at Tier 5 do not shoot premium ammo, and regular ammunition just cannot penetrate the front of this tank in any way. It's all red. It just doesn't go in. Now, he had his teammate tell him that the Leo went down, so he's sort of backing off because he thinks he's going to come up behind him. So he's being cautious, which is really smart, and then he realizes that the Leo is, didn't go down, and of course he bounces a couple hundred more, why not? Up to 2635, it's just, I would be happy to bounce 2600 damage in a tier 10 game. So finally, I don't know how he pulled it off, kills off the pest Leo, and now it's an easy two-on-one against this Bozo and the PZ, who cannot penetrate him. The SU decides to go for the kill steal, and oops does what you're supposed to do, and shoves him out of the way. Well done. Pops him one more time. SU's on the reload. Gotta get the kill here. Oops, don't back down. Finishes the job. Look at this. 2,795 block damage. Unbelievable. I don't know how this is not a mastery. Well, we know they don't count block damage into masteries, which they should. MC1. I mean, look at this. 1822. Look at the shots. 59 shots. He bounced 43 of them. And he hit just about every player on the other team. Fantastic match by Oops. I mean, real domination here. So one man wrecking crew in the T1. It is a Seal Clubbers tank, guys. And I went and took a look at this Leo, and he has a accuracy of 73%, and I think we all know why. So the second match is actually Ronan and I, uh, Steel Clubbing in the BDRs. And uh, this is kind of, it starts off as your standard run-of-the-mill match. It ends up being a little bit crazy at the end, but... The BDR is so strong that it, you just feel invincible against Tier 5s, and, and, and Tier 4s can't even do anything to you. So, the, the real trick with this tank is the gun handling. It is atrocious, and you really have to aim down to make sure your shots land. And you'll see that I do miss a whole ton of shots at the end, but I get away with it because the tank is so strong. In my defense, I have not really played this tank that much, and so I took this was one of my first matches with it. Um, in a long time and I forgot how bad the gun hailing was and I was bouncing things like crazy so I'm taking my favorite spot on this map behind this rock I always behind this rock if you're playing against me you know where I'm gonna be I'm gonna be right there Ronan always goes to the waterfall 
wipes out this KV-1, so we got a nice crossfire going. Um, so far, so good. Of course, there's some buffoon rushes in, which you think is fine, but it ultimately does cause problems. Uh, some yellowing idiot. It's T25, so I, I'm just sort of biding my time here. I know he's going to back up, and I know Rowan's going to be able to hit him. He did get one in on him, which was unfortunate. I know this guy will eventually realize he made a mistake and backs away, so I'm just waiting to stick him in the, in the side when he backs out. And there you go, he's done. So, clears that little problem. Back to uh, back to the front. Um, so now I can feel like I can push a little bit forward because these guys are not moving, so I can get more aggressive and I discover a, a, just the treat of a lifetime. An angry Connor, the side, and of course, this derpy, stupid gun misses and hits the tracks. It would have been 300 damage. And then he just sneaks off before I can kill him. And unfortunately, he is able to kill Ronan. So that HE miss basically cost Ronan's life. That was a terrible miss on my part. So that kind of ruined his game. And it was 100% my fault. But I, I blame the BDR. Derpy gun. This Y5 just a little bit clueless. But their SU is pushing. So I'm trying not to push too hard. But I see this T1 as a one shot. So I got to clear him. Load APCR and then just pop him inside of the turret. And uh, just before he turned. If he had turned one second later, I would have bounced. So I got a little bit lucky. Y5 showing me his butt so I can HE him. This gun has a great HE can. Look at that, 255. That just wrecks him. Um, and, and I can tell at this point that it's two on three, but I can tell it's about to be one against three. Uh, my teammate, I think he's in a leopard, doesn't know what he's doing. and I, So I'm already getting ready for the one versus three. I'm backing up. I'm just going to use this rock as cover so I can have them all in front of me. Of course, they kill him in two seconds, so there's no point chasing him. If I chased to try to help him, I would have been in between him. It would have been the enemy. You just have to know when the one on three is coming and just let the guy die. It's not worth saving. So at this point, I'm, the Y5, of course, bounces me. And my number one target is this T1 Heavy, and I miss, of course. And so these two guys are rushing me. The T1's kind of backing up. So at this point, I, I'll take a hit from the Y5 because he's a smaller cannon just so I can kill this SC. And I bounced him. So you kind of have to choose who you're going to bounce. In that case, definitely bounce the medium versus the TD. Now I've turned towards him so he can't pin me anymore because the armor's so good. And two seconds is down to one on one. I'm just assuming because it's tier 5 that this guy's an idiot. So I, I put a nice one into the side. And now this is when it gets a little bit stupid. I've got way more hit points. He's down to basically a one shot. And I can I thought he was going to push me, so I stopped and then he stops. I said, "Okay, I'll just go kill this idiot." And and now you've got the parade of stupidity begins because the T1 is also broken. I mean, this is hilarious. APCR to the side, bounce. Should have easily gone in, bounced that. So I'm like, "Okay, here I got a nice shot shot on the side. He hits me with an APCR." Right into the butt, bounce again. That was an AP around. <laughs> Even Ronan's starting to like, wonder what the hell's going on. Okay, let's try it one more time. But this tank is so, the t one so strong. Bounce again to the side, APCR. It, it was not red, it went in, but it didn't go. So I'm, I'm getting really pissed off at this point. I'm just like rushing the guy. I hit him, popped the tract off, and then put a nice AP around into the side for the win. It was a little bit ridiculous there at the end, but hey, I get the collabing off, I get the mastery and uh, some really nice seal clubbing. Um, this works really well, guys. Uh, I don't uh, recommend doing this all the time, but if you need a win rate bump or just to improve your mood, grab these two tanks or one of these two tanks, get a platoon mate, and go beat the crap out of some tier fives. It's nice. Enjoy the, uh, hope you enjoy the replays, and please subscribe to the channel.